guess what? You can take classes with none other than Laurel Ryan. Laurel Ryan is doing a solo jazz class, and that is Wednesday nights until March 10th. So she's doing them every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, until March 10th. And that is over at cmdance.org. Who is Laurel Ryan? Well, she's not only a part of our Integrated Rhythm family who does the music compositions and has been on several of our episodes, she is also an amazing instructor. And the classes are all about welcoming everyone into the dance. They're all about improvisation. They're all about building your musicality. They're all about basically just getting into the spirit of solo jazz. So you should go check it out. Once again, cmdance.org. Every Wednesday night until March 10th. Do yourself a huge favor. Hop on in. You're going to love it. Integrated Rhythm with Tisomo and Bobby. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Integrated Rhythm with Tisomo Salamani and Bobby White. This is part two of our incredible conversation with badass Michelle Stokes. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Michelle, by the way, how, how many, how, what are some of your favorite slash most hated puns on your last name? And have you always gotten puns on your last name? <laughs> I'm so stoked to be here with Michelle Stokes or Michelle, my bell, something more type in or so type in or so. I'm like, okay, I get it. It's fun. <laughs> like, I don't, I used to be mad because I'm like, I don't know. I never heard this song or whatever. But now I'm like, you know what? It's life. <laughs> it's fun. Do different puns fall into like the, the category that you tend to get from white people versus the category you tend to get from oh. black people? Well, let's see. That's a very good question. I have never, <laughs> for me, I've never ran into a black person who's all like, how stoked you are to be here, Stokes. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I, or the sing the Michelle song. They're just always like, sup Stokes or what's up, Shell? Like, it's never been like a, they never done that. Now, everybody else. Dear listeners, there. Bobby White has done this several times to Michelle. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> building the white guy stereotype know. once again, Bobby White. <laughs> to, so for me, it's like, eh, it don't, it doesn't hurt me or anything. It makes me laugh. It's fine. It's like, I'm not irritated. I'm just like, oh, it's, it's going to happen. It's just what it's going to be. I'm sure I've done it to somebody at some point, but like. All my black friends didn't do it. <laughs> so, so sad. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see. Chisomo, is there is, yeah. is there is there any pun that people can make on your name or have made on your names? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Tell me, tell us. Michelle, I like oh, yeah. out, by the way. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, what do you think? Are there, is there anything that jumps out to you? Somo, Chisomo, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that, in fact, was my AOL screen name. <laughs> it, 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 like, I'm not even. <laughs> don't we all have them AOL screen names that you know you shouldn't have had? Mine was Fashion Lover 54. <laughs> <laughs> it still is Fashion Lover 54. <laughs> As a G, as like a Yahoo. <laughs> Why, that, that you could have gone a lot worse than Fashion Lover Fifty Four. I know, huh? <laughs> That's, no, it's amazing. But yeah, but Samo Samo was definitely a thing. Um, <laughs> I think one of my earlier names was the Bobster, but <laughs> it wouldn't allow for the R, so it's the Bobsta. <laughs> the Bobsta. <laughs> <laughs> I like that though, the Bobsta. The bobster. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> the bobster. I'm the bobster. I'm like a monster. I swing dance. You don't know not stunts. I don't know. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Welcome oh. to uh, rap battles here with uh, Bobby and Tosomo. <laughs> rap battles. My battles. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
Oh man, I I don't know why I always think about Flight of the Concords. Like uh, <laughs> I'm the rhyme nostrils, my my rhymes are bottomless. <laughs> so good, so good. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah. Um. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I. Sorry. Go ahead. So. No, no. I I was going to switch over to the question, but if you had anything else you wanted on names. Uh, no, I was going to say the other thing that kind of like unwittingly, I don't even know if I want to say it on air for everybody to <laughs> remember and say it. and to taunt me with it. Um, <laughs> the thing that has always that has followed me since childhood with groups of people that don't know each other is mm-hmm. cheese salami, like Chisomo Salamani, cheese Ooh. salami. Yeah. Wait, let me see. Is there like a boo reaction to that? If yeah. we, if I was six, Here, I'll just put this clap emoji. Six, I totally would have been like, cheese and salami, cheese and salami, cheese and salami. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, that's, we're doing that, I guess. I don't even like salami like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but I kind of do, but I kind of <laughs> like some Genoa salami, but <laughs> I mean, that, it's, I guess I was just called like a cheap charcuterie board, right? So it's oh, like, yeah. mm. <laughs> and you ain't cheap, you luxury charcuterie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm a lovely charcuterie board. Excuse me, don't call me cheese and salami, call me charcuterie, okay? Okay, I'm char. Coterie. <laughs> With the honey and the soft cheese. Exactly. You can call me Char for short. So. <laughs> I'm just going to come up. When we see each other in person, I'm going to be like, Char, Char. Give me a hug. Char, Char. Actually, I don't, I do not hate that nickname. <laughs> So, uh, we got to come up with something with Bobby. So yours is Shy Shy, but it got to be Bobby B. Bobby B. Bobby B. Uh, the Bobster. Bobby B. Like Yogi yeah. Bear. <laughs> Bobby B, come over here. Yeah, Bobby. 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 I, I, I kind of love it when people shout Bobby across the, Bobby. Across the room. Bobby, I love you. I feel, I feel love. But yeah, you do know that like that's the, the kind of Cleveland spirit crew, I want to see people. You, know? you do realize that the Cleveland hey. crew does that, right? You, hey, Bobby, I, of course, yeah. Oh, I we know. Do. Like every we I see know. you, we're like, it. hey Bobby, hey Bobby, <laughs> hey Bobby. <laughs> we will. I, I know you hear me. <laughs> I know. Turn around. That reminds me, Michelle. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, you've become a veteran MC in the scene. What is your philosophy in MCing for swing dance events? Okay, and for so, you, sorry to cut okay. you off. Go for no, it. no, no, you're good. I cut you off. Look at it. We cut each other off. It's fine. <laughs> it's because we love each other. Um, actually, I became an MC by mistake. <laughs> okay, so basically me and Laurel, You accidentally again, ran into a re- microphone? <laughs> yes. Again, me and Laurel, we were volunteering. So if we weren't in competitions to win free tickets, we were volunteering to not pay for events. Ah. And we were volunteering at a table, like, I think we were doing tickets or like making sure people had their passes or something. And we were fake arguing. So we get into these little spats where we're like, no, no, you, uh-uh, not you. Like, where we're like, nah, that looks yellow. Nah, girl, that looks blue. What you talking about that looks blue? Like, where we, <laughs> it's like nothing serious, but we're just going back and forth. And Evan, uh, forced, he saw us arguing and he thought like that would make a good emceeing team. So he was the first one that hired us and gave us a chance. So he was like coaching us. Like, he's like, would you like to do this thing for our event? We're like, okay, we'll give it a try. And I remember he's like, we got there and he was telling us what MCs do I'm like here's a schedule you want to make sure like the people know what's coming up next have fun with it I I kind of remember like our very first time we got on the mic I was very stiff I was like my name is Michelle super happy to be here okay bye like very <laughs> like this is what I had seen this is what I had seen MCs do they're like all right guys uh, like <laughs> Now, if you came up to like the next event, if you went up to the microphone and did that exact same thing, everyone would laugh their ass. Off. <laughs> yeah. I know, I was so nervous, and and like I felt like Laurel was doing like a way cooler job than I was. Like she was just there being cool, and I was just like, "Hello, I'm here at eight thirty. We do this, okay? Bye." And I remember Evan being like, "Just have fun." 
just have fun, have fun with the audience. And then the next time we went up, it was, I felt like it was infinitely better on my side. Laura was doing great already on her own, but yeah. And it was just fun. And I remember that job was just really fun. And I think Gabby was one of the teachers and I felt like that's the way we like got introduced to her and we were all laughing and I don't know. I just remember it being fun. And so I think now that I'm getting more and more emceeing opportunities, I feel like have fun with your audience. So instead of singling out like the one person that you know and then like pick on them <laughs> and then make people look at them, like instead of doing that, involve like the whole audience, like involve them into whatever you're announcing. I like to use like, what time did I say? And then they shout it back to you or like just different things to involve the crowd. Because I think what people want in the community, just in whole, any community, is they want to feel involved. They want to feel like they're a part of it. They want to feel like their contribution means something. So if you're an MC, all you're doing is you're like, you're just a glorified announcer. Like take the paper of the schedule and you're just telling people the schedule. So now you want to involve people and make them feel a part of the community and a part of the event. And without them, the event wouldn't happen. So that's what I feel like I always want to do when I get a mic. Like, it's not about me. It's about everybody else and how they feel and making them feel welcome. And that's what I, that's what I'm always trying to strive for. So, yeah, but I, I feel like out of the two of us, me and Laurel, I'm always like the stiffer one. Like, I'm always like, ah, ah. <laughs> oh, they're going to know. I got to be serious. <laughs> so for you, does, does that philosophy consciously tie in with thoughts you have about black culture and or blackness and the dance? Hmm. Okay. So I looked at these questions before and that one was like a harder one to think about or to like come up with the answer. I feel like I just don't want people to feel the way I felt in certain situations. So I didn't want to feel like when I went to a swing event and I'd be in the audience and then someone hyped, like the person at the front hyper-focused on somebody and I didn't get the joke because I'm new. I felt like, oh, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> like, I'm just sitting here watching you hyper-focus on this person. Or if I'm in class or something or at the dance and no one's asking me to dance or no one wants to dance with me because they don't know who I am. Or in a class, me practicing whatever the teacher has taught doesn't look like the teacher, so I'm doing it wrong. Like all of those like little in, what is it? Like all those little moments where you feel bad about yourself for just being who you are in the scene. Like that's what I don't want to happen when I have a microphone or when, I, when I'm teaching. So any of the like things that I felt left out out or bad about, I then take that knowledge and then try to do the opposite. So if I felt isolated and alone as an audience member, then as an MC, I want to make everyone feel welcome. If in my class, if in a class I felt also isolated and not valued for what I bring by myself, then I want all my classes to have a feeling of community and that like if you're solo jazz dancing or partner dancing like your contribution matters to the overall community and to your partnership in this class so like anything I try to contradict what happened to me and make it better or easier for someone else now I'm not always perfect but that's what I'm thinking about and I think a lot of those ways that I want things to be is because some of the situations I was put in is because I'm black. So it's just kind of like doing your little part, I guess, to correct a wrong or like to be like, I never want that person to feel how I felt. I never want that person to feel devalued and therefore like I'm crying in the bathroom. <laughs> like that's not what I want. So that's what I think of when you ask me that question. Yeah. Yeah. You're, striving for inclusivity as much as you like you're <clears throat> leveraging your power to make other people feel welcome and included and that's so beautiful i think that's incredible you know i'm trying man it's not always easy and i feel like i don't always do it right 
but I'm trying to do my part in order for me to feel like I want to stay. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I just want to improve the community as a whole. I think we put a lot of value. I think people put a lot, place a lot of value in who they are as how they dance. And like, that's not where your value lies. Right. It, like you're a whole person and you're doing things in your life. And that's, that's what's cool. If you don't dance well, doesn't mean you're a bad person or like a person not worth knowing. And I think a lot of people take the dance so seriously that that's how they do it. That's how yeah. they do the dance. And it's like, that's not dancing. Again, it goes back to what Bobby said. I think that's like a shell of a dance. That's not right. dancing with all of your joy and all your happiness and like wanting to honestly share something with someone. You're wanting to impress somebody to make it up the ranks for some reason. Mm -hmm. Only to get in, only to get behind closed doors, and all you know is that people are talking about other people. That's all it is. Yeah, <laughs> people talk about people, or people dating people. That's all it is. You ain't missing out on nothing. <laughs> it's it's true though. Um, it's every bit of the journey should be valued and important because there really is no destination, right? Mm -hmm. I think people think that there is a specific. And, and people might have goals, which it's okay to have the goal of wanting yeah. to be an international swing dance instructor or mm -hmm. um, to, to win certain competitions or whatever. I think goals are fine, but mm -hmm. goals do not reflect a, the value of a human life, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you're right. Like big everyone, everyone should be valued from a person who's never swing danced before mm -hmm. all the way through people who've been around for a really long time and... Um, and I, I love what you're doing to help that uh, be in the community. So thanks. Oh, no problem. It all ties together, though. Like, think about it. Like, if people valued people for who they are, then they wouldn't judge them on their beauty standards. So they would ask everybody to dance. <laughs> they wouldn't look at a body and be like, mm, no, not for this competition. Like, it all, like, feeds into each other. We just have to kind of, like, do our part to be like, it's just a dance, y'all. Let's be real. Like, we're doing a niche dance. It's niche. Like, so, what we try, like, what value is it to act hoity-toity? Like, oh, I can do a backflip yeah. and you can't. <laughs> like, so don't even ask me to dance. <laughs> like, what? I don't dance with low, like, lowly people. Only dance with these people. Like, yeah. Like, what is you doing? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> wait a celebrity i'm not a celebrity we just people doing stuff come on yeah. <laughs> man yeah it, it's that also makes me think of that whole like make believe like uh, now we're making believe that we're that there's a hierarchy we're making believe that there's a status we're making believe that like and i know that like and it, you can probably apply that make believe to every every you know mm -hmm. yeah everything but yeah, people want, they're like, I want to be, I want to do this. So now I got to, I got to do this and I got to talk to these people and I got to shun these people. And I got, <laughs> it's just like, come on, like, let's stop. Just stop. If your world ever starts to feel like you're back in high school, that's a bad thing. We <laughs> that's want to, a bad thing. We want to steer away from that and yep. go yep. in another direction. I agree. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. And, um, it, you were as you were talking about like having those negative experiences and not wanting other people to experience that that's actually a lot of like what shaped my personality growing up like mm -hmm. being a kid who being an immigrant kid I was always on the outside and I didn't want people to feel that way and so mm -hmm. um, I've actually had people who who meet me or have form opinions about me and think that I'm like like super nice and whatever and like think that I don't have negative emotions or like anger or whatever. And I'm like, no, I choose to be really nice because I know what it's like to feel not, not wanted, you know, and mm -hmm. nobody wants that. Nobody wants to feel excluded or isolated. And so, and like you said, um, it's an imperfect situation. Like when you work really hard to care for people, you're not always going to hit the mark, but like if more of us were doing what you were doing and mm -hmm. thinking like, how can I, how can I care about the people in this 
area in this community a little bit better we would we would be able to make some changes so Mm -hmm. we're all pulling that weight so and by the way you are a killer mc so absolutely you are thanks y'all i still feel a type of way about it like i still feel like i don't know i like how long are they gonna want to keep like the thing about being black, I'm going to talk about a little bit of black experience. The thing, the thing about being black <laughs> is that you're always questioning, did they hire you because you're black or did they hire you because you're good? Because like right now, there's like people are trying to be like inclusive, right? They're at least talking about stuff. They're at least wanting to do stuff. But then when people hire you, you're like, I think it's because I'm good, not because they check a box of diversity. They're like... We got our blacks. Okay. And now let's uh, focus on like other leadership. Like it's, it's like a double-edged sword. Like you're excited, but then at the same time, you're like, wait a minute, is this true? Am I actually good? Or are people like just wanting you around? Cause it eases their guilt a little bit. Cause like you're mm-hmm. black. I don't know. So I'm glad that you said that. That makes me feel good. Cause I'm like, oh, okay. Now it makes me feel like, oh yeah, I'm legitimate. Cause I still don't feel that way sometimes. It's like that imposter you syndrome. Are really right? I was going to say imposter Absolutely. syndrome is real. And so, and Bobby just like gave you an endorsement. What was that yeah. again? <laughs> Michelle is an incredible MC. So, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Anytime, yeah. Anytime that I'm at an event, like at Lindy Focus, when, when I was at Lindy Focus and uh, Michael was like, oh yeah, the, the, uh, you know, the, the host before the dance are going to be Michelle and Laurel. I was just like, yes. Oh my God. Such a great idea. Um, and it's, it's, um, so many MCs. Um, I I feel like, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a whole lot of traits that go into, uh, Um, (laughs) while you're while you're while you're thinking i wanted to say to people who don't know bobby is an is a an excellent mc he is Mm -hmm. seasoned so he's speaking from that perspective um i don't know much about being an mc i really only got my first opportunity to do it with cowbell and i had covid so (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) no but you did an awesome job. No yes, one could tell you that you were about to die. No one you, could were, tell you were doing it. That you were going to fall asleep between the breaks. Oh you my were goodness. Doing I, it. Ha- I had a hot water bottle, like trying to keep my body from falling apart. But anyway, um, you were saying, Bobby? Yeah. So um, it's, it's for me, like I've, I've seen so many MCs in the scene do a perfectly fine job. But what they miss is exactly what Michelle was talking about. They, they either like resort to some kind of insider place to, to, to MC from like, like pointing like to friends in the audience and, or making jokes about the contestants that are walking by because they know the contestants, but no one else knows that they know the contestants. So they don't know quite what the, what's going on. And, um, or they have a, 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 a negative vibe to the emceeing mm-hmm. um, where like basically it's just not supportive and uplifting and hyping, you know, the, the situation. And th- those are two of, of, you know, those are two things that Michelle and Laurel both do so well, exactly like she said, like the inclusive, including the audience and also m- always coming from a positive place. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. Like, I love me. I, I, I don't want to speak for Laurel, but I am. I think <laughs> me and Laurel love to host like the camp meetings at Lindy Focus. Cause it's a, it's a way for us to like, it's like a little show. So we get to plan the show and we talk about like, we'll email people like, what do you, what are you seeing as a trend happening in the scene? Or what do you see as a thing? I remember our first year we wanted to bring attention to, awkward moments that black people face in the scene so like we emailed a bunch of black people and like put some questions out there and was like what's your experience with this tell us about this and what is a way that we can bring it to an audience before a dance mind you because like people want to be up they want to be hyped they want to go dancing in a way that's fun (laughs) in a way that's but also you can put the two together and so 
I feel like that's a good opportunity. Linear Focus gives you a good opportunity to like curate your the shows so that you can like bring these issues. And me and Laura always want to have fun. So it was like, what can we do? Like, what's the experience of, of this group of people? What's the experience of this group of people? And then we try to curate it where people can learn something and have fun. Sorry if you can hear uh, a dog <laughs> in the mic. I think Taser, our dog, is really wanting to have fun <laughs> you're, you're fine. such a great mc even <laughs> in your house yeah. in the house yeah. But yeah, the dog like, is hyped up hyped up baby so yeah. <laughs> so that's like something that's important to us like if we're gonna have a mic we don't want the attention to be on us for us sake we want it to be about y'all so what do y'all want to talk about what do y'all want to do and like what do the what do the the organizers want and then we try to like merge the two ideas together so yeah yeah we, we're we trying we're doing it <laughs> that's it's brilliant i actually so i haven't been to focus when you've emceed but i've heard about these um i've heard about the show you know and so i actually would love for you to to um explicitly outline like what are some of the ways that you got the audience hype about these societal issues because you're using this platform to then inform this community about like social justice issues more or less so you were like the integrated rhythm before the integrated rhythm existed right <laughs> whoa, whoa. So. shout out <laughs> <laughs> well okay so i remember when we first got like okay so this is complicated too because I had been hired for Lindy Focus to help teach before MC. And so they asked us to MC one year and I was like, oh, this is nice, this is really cool. And I thought at the time, I was like, why are they asking me? Is it because I'm black? I don't know, but, <laughs> but it wasn't, <laughs> it's fine. They did it because they liked us, <laughs> but goes back to like always second guessing yourself. But I remember like they wanted serious topics faced right before a dance and i remember me and laura were like this seems like a bad match because who wants to be told <laughs> blacks and racism and you're doing a dance that blacks made and there's racism like and then okay <laughs> have fun at the dance <laughs> <Don't lazy night. laughs> so we kept on like laughing about that like like a such a serious thing right before a dance and we're like well how can we do this like what is it that we want to talk about so we the first time we did this we talked about like what each other's experience was and yeah we like kind of grew up together in the scene so we kind of knew what were like these stories but we retold these stories and we figured out what the common factor was and then we're like okay let's see if this common factor is a thread through anybody else and we had three or four nights to come up with something so we knew that the first and the last night, we were like, first and last night, it's just going to be the welcome and the ending, the welcome and the goodbye. So we just need to curate something really fun, really hype, and say goodbye and thank everybody on the last two nights. So really, it was the nights two and three that we had to come up with something. So we we're like, wouldn't it be funny to, to have like a game show where it's like, like, come up with a question? You see a girl with a big fro. What do you do? A, touch her fro. B, talk about like, she looks wild. C, introduce yourself and ask her to dance. Or D, ignore her the whole time. She's black, she knows other blacks. Like, like wouldn't it be funny to have a show where it talks about like these things that pe I think people assume in this situation, but how can we make it funny where it's not awkward, but also draw attention to the fact like, this is something that people face. So we made like a panel where like we read these questions and so that was like part of the show and it made people laugh but it also made people go like oh and these were real life situations that me and laurel had gone through the questions were the questions that happened to us <laughs> so it was just funny and then like that was a thing and then night three we wanted to talk about there was this thing happening at the community at the time where it felt like you had to go and go and go you had to sell yourself you had to be out there you had to put your name out there and like the fun of the Lindy Hop was taken out of it and like feeling connected to the community was taken out of it. What can we do 
to speak to that. So then we had another panel talking with like, and we didn't want necessarily seasoned dancers. We wanted to always give a voice to people who we feel like is doing great things in the community, but they're not getting the light, like they're not getting the spotlight because they don't fit the like aesthetic that is popular or trendy. So we're always looking for someone that we can give like a hoist up. And we like just had a conversation about like, how do you sustain in the Lindy scene? How do you keep going when you feel burnt out? So that was like our first experience. We just wanted to, what we were facing at the time, we wanted to bring to the community. And the next time we were like, what else is facing now? And we were like, yo, I feel like people are coming out and wanting to be like, wanting to be like, this is who I am. Like, deal with it. Love me for it. Like, how is the community dealing with that? Because in Tulsa, it wasn't going so hot. <laughs> so we wanted to talk about like, how do you include everybody? So that's usually what it is. Like whatever we feel is a trend happening, we'll like start to email people or message people and ask about what's happening in their scenes and try to touch each scene in the States and then bring that information into it and then turn it into like a game. So the last time I felt like the audience wasn't involved enough in some of our games because you can only have so many people up there. So I was like, Laurel, I want to involve everybody. I want to have everybody in the game. So they feel like they're a part of something. And so we came up with a couple of games where that was a possibility. So again, ultimately people just want to feel involved. They want to feel special. They want to feel loved. And that's why people join hobbies and communities is to get that, like, that connection. And if we're not providing that connection, we won't have a scene so you can't just, it can't just be about being a good dancer and like bump everybody else. It has to be about relationships and like the connection with that and the connection to the dance. And I think that the dance is meant to be like a great connector. Like it's supposed to be your expression, how you feel, good or bad, and a connection with other people to bring greater connectivity to the community as a whole. And I think people are using it as like a type of currency, I guess, or something else. And that's why it's dysfunctional. Did I answer the question right? <laughs> Did I do it? <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. A classic answer. Yeah. It's I I just love hearing your your thoughts and um also like that whole your whole approach is really cool and dynamic. And then also I, I would say innovative based on the things that I know, um, I have my limited, <laughs> my very limited knowledge, <laughs> but, but, um, no, absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. There are camp meetings where something I'd never seen anything like it before. Like, yeah, previous camp meetings had had games and previous camp meetings had tried to educate, but, the way that it all layered together and it all worked together was just like really new and really cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, um, just thinking about the facts of that situation, a friend of mine, whenever I'm like having a moment, will be like, check the facts. Right. So checking the facts about your experience, like you were, you were a brilliant MC. And so um, like you were talking about, people from vulnerable populations often have imposter syndrome, you know, and every, I mean, not to say that imposter syndrome is only for people who have, who are from vulnerable populations. It's out there. Yeah. It's real. Anyone can have imposter, it's, it's real. Anyone can have imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. but those of us who have like anyone who's had imposter syndrome knows um, that it, it can be really hard to defeat, but a good way to do that is by checking the facts. And you just told us this whole like incredible badass way that you approach emceeing and like, it's so cool. So thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. <laughs> also trying to learn how to take a compliment. So I like make these weird faces. And yeah. <laughs> thank you and do weird stuff. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're totally welcome. Yeah. I, um, my, I, my ability to put sentences together is like rapidly declining. So I'm just throwing that out. There. All right. Cool. You heard it here for, first folks. Let's see. Let's wrap it up. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, This is okay. So, um, what are your hopes for the scene when we get back together again? What does your ideal Lindy Hop scene look like? Okay, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. This is what I want. This is what I want. I want people to dress how they want to dress. I want people to feel good in their bodies because all of our bodies, I think, have changed because of like COVID and pandemic, all that. The panini, whatever. I want us all to get together, whether it's in a t-shirt and jeans with holes in it, whether it's like your favorite dress, whether it's your favorite vintage piece, whatever. I want us all to get together, realize we made it. We did it. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> Raise the roof. And I want us to like just dance, like play some music, not worry if like the special judge is watching or who's whatever. I just want it to be a bunch of back to back exchanges like <laughs> like forget comp like people love to compete sure but like for the most part i want a bunch of exchanges i want us to dance together i want us to talk i want us to play games oh man i want us to have soul night like jazz half the night soul night the other part of the night i want us to get down i don't know i want some little food some little charcuterie boards i don't know i want all- <laughs> i just want it to be like a good like family reunion, like style. Like, wouldn't it be cool if it was like, I don't know, like outside barbecue, like it's the daytime, we're doing group dances, we're we're swing dancing, there's ribs over here. It might be messy, but like, wouldn't it be fun like to have that like family reunion feel? We all got t-shirts with matching t-shirts and with like faces on it, and like Uncle Bobby and Uncle Doug, it's all like all listed on the back. The Johnsons. <laughs> the Johnsons, <laughs> yeah. Like, wouldn't it be fun? Like, whoever like sign, like, look, okay, we're creating an event right now. Whoever signs up gets their name on the T-shirt, just like a family reunion, and like, oh man, it would be so cool. Like, no, no expectations, just like people getting back together and hugging and like dancing and talking about how like their spouse was irritating because they wanted to make sourdough, but they they wanted to make something else. And the cat and the dog now best friends. Like, that'd be fun, right? I think so. I want the scene, though, to be more inclusive, more friendly, less about competing and where you are within the hierarchy, but more about sharing ideas and collaboration because that's what I value. I value relationships and collab- I want to collaborate. I want to, that's what I want to see more like helping each other out like hey how do i do this thing or be not being afraid to ask each other and being vulnerable and not look at each other as competitors like i feel like a lot of follows and a lot of leads like leads are looking at leads as competitors and follows are looking at follows as competitors to get into the class to get into the competition to to be noticed by the teacher or to be complimented by this person they value as a dancer i just want us to all get together and be cool have a nice little drink with ice cubes in it just be chill and dance and eat and have fun (laughs) hey everybody this is bobby white from integrated rhythm we're here to ask you to please consider donating to the podcast you can do so by going to patreon.com slash integrated rhythm you can do so by venmoing at bobby swungover And make sure to put a little IR in the note so we make sure it goes to the right people. You can also do so by PayPaling at BobbyWhite3. And once again, putting a little IR in the the window there. Doing so will help us keep this podcast going. And we love doing it and we hope you love it too. If you can't afford to donate at this time because times are rough, we totally understand. We don't want you to put yourselves out. We want you to keep enjoying the podcast for free. However, if you have a little bit of pocket change in your pocket, we would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thanks and have a great day.